let's have a look first of all. Here they are throwing an American football, and it goes there. It follows a nice smooth parabolic motion. Now what we see when they throw it is that the ball starts off with a vertical and a horizontal velocity. Once the ball has reached about halfway up, the velocity vertically has reduced, but the horizontal velocity is still the same. When it reaches the top, what we have is the horizontal velocity exists, but there is no vertical velocity, either up nor down. Gravity starts to take an effect now and pulls the ball downward the horizontal velocity is still the same, but the vertical velocity is increasing. And once it reaches back to the same height it was, the vertical velocity is now the same as it was before, but in an opposite direction. And the horizontal velocity is still the same. Let's watch this a few times and we'll see what happens. Here they go again. Throwing the ball, goes up, reaches the top, and then starts coming back downward. One of the other things that we should note is that when the ball flies through the air and goes and lands at the same height, it has the same velocity as it took off with. Now if you watch with this particular throw, it goes up and it'll come down and it'll go past the starting height. And this is when we notice the velocity being higher than it was before. Now if we were to summarize it, <coughs> you've got a horizontal and you've got a vertical component. What we have to do when we do this is we first of all have to solve for time using the vertical components and we'll, following that you will solve the range or the displacement horizontally using the time that you've calculated from the vertical components. And that's about as hard as it gets.